He says, sit in this for a moment and notice how much you fear this idea. Really, how many of you guys can say, yeah, I'd be totally cool if everybody hated me, right? It's not an idea that we're fond of. (laughs) He says, don't worry that it can be true. It can never be true. So he doesn't want you getting scared about this. He says, it is impossible to be totally abandoned by love. But look at this for a moment as if it is true, and notice how much you fear this as an idea of truth. So what he's really having us do is look right straight at it, because if we can look right straight at it, then maybe we can start to realize, wait a minute, it is true. I am only doing this and saying this and avoiding this and all of these things that aren't authentic for me, because I'm fearing this ridiculous picture that he's painting for me. I really, down deep inside, fear um, being totally rejected. I fear being totally rejected. And I think that in order to convince myself that I'm not totally rejectable, I need the approval of others. And there are so many things that I am doing to constantly try and get that approval. And since it's not something that is a consistent type of love, I live in, 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 a, in a position of stress, a position of fear. He just wants us to admit that this obstacle is in our minds. He says, now let's look beyond this idea. Now that you've sat here and looked at it for a minute, just how true this is for you. Now let's look beyond this idea. Because there is another idea that you fear more. Oh, shit. Can you guys believe that? It's going to get worse. Oh, Jamie wants to go outside. If somebody would please take care of her for me, since there's so many people in the room. (laughs) Now let's look beyond this idea. Because there is another idea that you fear more. Hold my hand and willingly engage your free-flowing imagination as we step in together and look closely at what you truly fear. When you see the world hating you, despising you, and cutting you off, you are lost in a terrible suffering. But do not look away from why you suffer. Your suffering is not truly coming from them, okay? So you guys put yourself in the scene. He's really asking you to use your imagination here so that you can look at this. Put yourself in the scene. Really imagine no one likes you, right? We all agree. We don't like you, all right? He says, your suffering is not truly coming from them. Look carefully, honestly, and completely at what you are feeling now. You are suffering because you believe the hatred they project onto you is true. You believe it is real. And you believe it is real because you believe it is deserved. Okay, so the real problem, the real problem, which is how he started the paragraph, started the message at the top, the real problem is that we believe that um, you know we're totally unworthy, completely rejectable, nothing but a fake, shameful. These are all words people have used for me. Different words capture it for different people. The Course often uses the word guilt. Sinners, yeah, Laura Blue's throwing out sinners. The real reason we're suffering is because it's kind of like we think we've been found out. You know, now they see me the way I really am. You know, I faked them for a while, but now they see the real me. And that's the real reason we're suffering, is because we believe it. We're the ones who aren't approving, right? We're the ones we are really trying to fake out all this time. He says... And I, now I don't know what this is a typo. I don't know what this word is supposed to be. In a woos. <laughs> in a woos. <laughs> a quick change of perspective. Maybe that's a whoosh. In a whoosh. Maybe the H is missing, right? Yeah. Okay. In a whoosh. A quick change in perspective. You see clearly 
that the judgment you fear is not really theirs. You fear your agreement with their judgment. This is what you really fear the most. And I've, I've um, well, I've experienced this a couple of times, uh, one of which is coming up in a few weeks, the story that's coming up in uh, January of 2008, which is where we are now in this story, is when Laurent seems to reject me. When he, um, At this point, when this message came, I think that we were experiencing kind of a love affair. There was a temporary period of time where we experienced this love affair. At least that was my perspective. And But after a few weeks, at some point, he got up and he literally moved out of my bedroom into the guest room and avoided me as much as he could in the house, just completely avoided me. And I felt completely rejected. And in fact, we're going to look at the conversation I had with Holy Spirit when this happened. We'll be looking at that in a few weeks. But what you'll see is Holy Spirit is telling me then the same thing he's telling us here, is that what's really hurting me is that I believe I deserve that rejection. I really believe that Laurent just saw that I'm not good enough and that that's just a fact about who I am and what idiot would stay after they saw that, right? I mean, um, and, and Holy Spirit is saying this belief is in all of us. There was another time, I know I told you this story as well, before Laurent came to live with me, when I had the fear of rejection. You can see this rejection thing was really big for me. It keeps coming up over and over again. Before he moved in with me, when I had this fear of rejection, um, I had this experience of choosing to stay with the fear for two whole nights. And the first place I got to in the mind was I went way beyond the idea of Laurent reject me, and I got to this point in the mind where I saw that what I fear was that God would reject me, that if I let go all of my defense mechanisms and got completely vulnerable and went to God, God would say, not you. Just like kind of in this little scenario we're imagining here, you know, like everyone else is okay, but not you you. And then I even went beyond that in my mind, just like we're doing in this message. I went beyond that and I saw that what I really feared even more, because God, in in that scenario, God is still an other. I can still defend myself against his rejection by saying God's an asshole, right? I can put up a defense mechanism. But there's one person I cannot put up a defense mechanism against, and that's myself. If I ever decide within myself that I am thoroughly repulsive, that's it. If that decision is ever made, that is it. Because I have to be with myself all of the time. And that's my greatest fear. And that's what Spirit is saying here. That is all of our greatest fear. And we cover up our greatest fear through this game of getting approval. But you can see how the game of getting approval is never going to address or heal the fear, right? Yes, self-rejection. It's never going to address or heal the fear, and we're always going to have to keep singing and dancing and playing that act, and we're never going to be able to relax unless we allow that fear to be healed. And in fact, you know, I didn't even remember that this message came only a couple of weeks before. I think it was actually around the 15th, of January when Laurent, quote, rejected me. So this is, came on the 5th of January. I didn't even remember that this message came so so soon before that experience. But right now that I'm seeing this timeline, I'm extremely grateful that Laurent rejected me. I am so grateful because that is the experience that healed the belief in rejection for me. Like it hasn't come back since. It showed up over and over again up until that point. But after that point, it was healed completely. So I'm so grateful Laurent rejected me. Because if he hadn't, I would still be carrying that around in my mind. So Holy Spirit says, in a whoosh, (laughs) a quick change in perspective, you see clearly that the judgment you fear is not really theirs. You fear your agreement with their judgment. You fear your judgment of you, or as Barb is saying, self-rejection. You fear your final and complete. Oh boy, this is it. You guys, this is really what we fear more than anything. More than anything. You fear 
your final and complete self-devouring hatred of yourself. And whenever you seek approval, whenever you want someone outside of you to love you, what you are not seeing is that what you truly desire is simply to love yourself.